What's going on guys? It's your boy Terabyte Reacts and we are back with another Peaky Blinders reaction man season 2 episode 6 is here today. Um yeah. So <laughs> I'm laughing at myself because I'm messing up my intro. And I, and I, it's like I can see it coming. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, you're going to mess this shit up again. Okay? But anyways, Season 2, Episode 6 is here. Season 2, Episode 6. In Season 2, Episode 5, there's a lot of plot development that happened. Um, the pacing, as I said before, the pacing of the episode, I did not really like the pacing of the episode because... It seems like they rushed into the season finale. There's a lot of things that happened that, that was very unexpected. Um, as I said before, they could have fleshed out the um, the Solomons turning on, um, on Tommy a little bit better. They could have fleshed it out a lot better. Like, it was a surprise in a way that I didn't expect because there was, other than the meeting that he had with Sabini, there was nothing else that, because... Even the meeting was kind of like weird. You know what I'm saying? Like it was like he was being so sarcastic in that meeting that I never would have guessed that he would have really taken Sabini serious or taken his apology serious for that matter. Um, so it kind of seems like they just wrote this to make everything just come crashing down on Tommy all at once. You get what I'm saying? And there was it wasn't fleshed out enough and I, I didn't really I didn't feel that. You know what I mean? So I don't know if you guys feel the same way. Of course, let me know in the comment section if you felt the same way after season two, episode five. I felt like uh, um I felt like they rushed into um because they needed because they only got six episodes. So they kind of rushed it. That's just how how I felt about it, right? Like they could have fleshed out that storyline a lot better to lead up on, up on everything, um, to lead up to everything that happened to Tommy with with him losing everything in London, um, Arthur getting captured, Michael getting getting in prison, all of these, all everything. You get what I'm saying? Um, but there were some great things that happened in this episode, uh, in that episode, also, right? Where we have Grace coming by, you know what I'm saying? The 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 um the the chemistry that Tommy and Grace have on screen, man, it's just unbelievable. It's undeniable, right? So um, there's there's certain moral factors here that I don't agree with. Um, I didn't know that she was actually married to the dude. Um, at least maybe they said it, but I didn't capture captured in that way i thought they said he she was just with the dude i didn't i didn't hear them say that he that she was married to the dude. maybe i missed that line in the show maybe i did miss that line but i didn't know they were married but then i said if she was married to the guy just divorce him if you want to come back to tommy because you cheating on him and they've been trying to have um they said they're trying to have a child too so th there's that factor coming in now and now she's feeling guilty and all of this other stuff you already done the deed you already slept with tommy again so now is for her i feel like she needs if she wants she's still trying to get get tommy to do things and you know that tommy is not going to do um you know she wanted tommy to move to new york with her and that just didn't happen it didn't happen and now Tommy is with um, this girl, you know, uh, May, right? So it's like with him and May, May is like, listen, if you a gangster, do gangster shit, okay? Seems like she don't really mind it, you know, because she's seen all walks of life um, and she really likes Tommy. Um, she's basically saying, listen, it's her lost. You know what I'm saying? And I really respect Tommy for going back to her and letting her know, listen, there's somebody else that he really can't really get over. You know what I'm saying? And at first she was feeling some sort of way about it, but then she turned around and, and what and was like, Listen, if she don't want she don't want you, why you keep chasing her? That's basically what she was saying. You don't need to chase her in not so many words. You know what I mean? So 
it's it's a it's a, it's a conundrum right now. It's a you know what I'm saying. It's a it's a three way thing that's going on that I'm looking at and I'm like I don't know I don't know what I want. You know what I'm saying because for Tommy I don't know what I want for Tommy right now because as I, I love the relationship he has with Grace. Not not the, let me phrase this correctly. I love the chemistry between them. Right. Because they don't really have a relationship per se. Um, I love the chemistry between them. I love that they connect on such a deeper level of quote unquote true love. Right. Um, May is a sense of acceptance. You get what I'm saying? Like with her is acceptance. It's she accepts every part of Tommy and she's there. You get what I'm saying? Even though she's cheating on her husband too. Um, but she's pretty sure he's cheating too. So, hey, why not? <laughs> right? You know, so it's pretty dope. So I really want to see what's going to happen next in the in the in the season finale. See how things are gonna wrap up. Tommy does have a plan. Um, he already took care of um your boy Major Campbell. Um took care of him, not in killing him, but you know, basically letting him know, listen, if you want this guy dead, I'm going to do it on my terms because I know what you guys are planning. I know y'all want to kill me. You know what I'm saying? So I'm going to make sure I kill this guy somewhere where you can't take me out right after. I'm going to control the situation. So I love Tommy for that. Um, so I, I really want to see what's going to happen between Solomons and Tommy because for him to just betray after the guy offered you help, did help. You know what I'm saying? And now, oh, we went to school together. So, I mean, it's, it, some of this stuff is, is just doesn't ha add up. You get what I'm saying? It just doesn't add up. Um, seems like I didn't like how Michael treated Polly the, after he got out of prison, knowing what she had to do to get him out. He could have been a little bit more respectful. As I said, hopefully in the future, he has... I'm hoping that that's not it with him because if that's it and he doesn't seek revenge in any sort of way for his mom, I've lost complete respect for him and he doesn't deserve to be a Peaky Blinder, period. He can go sit his ass down somewhere because if, if, if you're going to be a Peaky Blinder, you need to understand first and foremost, family. First and foremost, when it comes on to the Peaky Blinders, is family. It's all about family, taking care of each other. That's the first thing that, from my perspective and what I've noticed about them and their code, is that family is always first, no matter what. Their dad is, it. Their dad is, is a con man, okay? And Tommy knows it, but Arthur, he's, he's, he, he, he just... He falls for everything, and he's the oldest one, which is, he got daddy issues. Anyways, let's jump into this episode, man. Remember, link is down in the description. Go watch the episode, and then come back here for the review. Thank you guys so very much for listening to me, if you listen to this intro, of course, because I know some of y'all just covered this. Jump to the link. But anyways, if you have listened to my intro, man, thank you guys for listening. As always, it's your boy, Terry by Reacts. I will see you guys for the review. Wow, you guys. Um, this episode was extra lit. Season finale of season two. And right off the bat, I have to say, man, Polly was the MVP of, I don't want to say the entire season, but definitely, definitely she was the MVP of the last two episodes, man. Or, well, I mean, or it's the last three episodes. Um, the episode... It wasn't last episode she got Michael out. I think it was episode five. But whichever episode that is, she was the MVP of that episode too. And also, this episode, I actually thought she was not going to kill him. But she did. And man, yo, yo, yo. No matter how she tries to play it off like she's not a Peaky Blinder, bro. She is the OG Peaky Blinders, man. Like, 
I'm sure these boys, they learned all their shit from her, man. Like, the grittiness of them all, they got that shit from Polly. That's why, that's why I'm like, the way how they respect her, they have to, at some point, they had to show who Polly really is. Because she basically raised those boys, man. She basically raised them. So, for... For, for who they are and you see that they're very specific type of people like they're all different all the boys are different you know what i'm saying like all of them are different even their son is different so all of them are different john tommy um finn and arthur they're all different individuals and that's one of the things that the show highlights so much is that how individuals even the people who are um, side characters or just co, um, um, you know what I'm saying? Like, what do you call them? Um, support characters that are in the show, right? They do a very good job of showing how different the brothers are and the respect that they have for Polly. Even though, you know what I'm saying? Even though no matter what, they're always gonna have that respect for Tom. They they might dis they they might disagree, but they're always gonna have that respect for Polly. So it was time, man. It was time for them to show you that who she is the OG Peaky Blinder. You know what I'm saying? Like I was waiting on her to get this moment in the show, and she finally got it, man. You know what I'm saying? And she walked away like a boss. You know what I'm saying? So I was happy to see her. Kill the character I wanted to die this season because it, it was just like at this point it was like as one of my subscribers pointed out that watched the show that commented and was like at this point it's like they're just making up storylines because people like his character as a rival to Tommy and I'm like no you should always be able to introduce um, better characters as the seasons go on we don't want the same I. I don't particularly like shows that keep the same villain going on for years and years and years. You get what I'm saying? And it's like you never get any conclusion to that character, to that rival. No matter how great they are, at some point they need to die. You get what I'm saying? As a writer, villains die. We get it. But we want them to die. You get what I'm saying? At some point we need to get that payoff and don't wait until the season Till you're doing the final season of the show to kill these people because you need to be able to introduce even more deadly rivals even more deadly villains in the show so that your show can keep going and that's one of the things that a lot of tv shows they do so wrong when they take forever to kill characters they take forever to do certain things and it's like you just watching the show um, to give you guys an example, I watch Empire. If you guys don't watch Empire after a certain season, I totally understand. Because at this point in the show, I don't even know what the hell the writers are doing. I still watch it because I'm a, a huge music lover. And every, pretty much everything that you hear in Empire is original music. And I love to get their music. I even buy their music off of iTunes because these artists, you know what I'm saying? Like they're, they're artists that we've never heard about and now they're blowing up. Um, the situation that happened with Justice Smollett, that's a side thing that I don't even want to get into right now. Because I have my own opinions about that. Um, you know, but it's just one of those things in TV shows that I just can't understand. Like, why won't they just kill characters? Or why won't they just... You get what I'm saying? Like, the surprise factor is huge. That's why I love Game of Thrones so much. That's one of the reasons why I love Game of Thrones so much. Because nobody is safe. Nobody is safe. Whether you're a hero or a villain, you are not safe. You could get killed. So it's like that shop value to it. As much as I um didn't... I, I, in that moment, I didn't want him to kill Tommy. It wouldn't have made sense to kill him. Why? Because the rest of the characters in the show are not as interesting. You get what I'm trying to say? So you can't kill the hero and the villain in the same episode. It wouldn't make any sense. So I wasn't expecting Tommy to die, but it would it, it would have blown my mind 
if they did, because it would have been so different, you know what I'm saying, would have made me want to see what they're going to do for season three. Who's going to rise to the occasion? Is Polly going to be the new leader of the, the Peaky Blinders? You get what I'm trying to say? Like, I wouldn't mind watching that. So in this episode, man, as I said, it started off kind of weird. That, that, that um, meeting that he had, that Tommy had with Alfie um, Solomons, that meeting, there was nothing leading up to the meeting. The same thing I was complaining about in episode five, like, where's all of this coming from? You get what I'm saying? But you just got to go with the flow. As I said, it, they messed up the pacing of the show in episode five because in, in, in episode six, now you in the season finale. Now you're going to reveal all of these things that were off screen. It just doesn't make sense to me. And as I said before, and I'm asking you guys this in general, or who's watching these this reaction, please, please, I'm begging you. Put it down in the comment section if I missed that conversation. Because I want to know when the hell did Alfie disagree, Alfie and... I remember them having this, having a conversation, but it was never shown that he was disappointed, that he, that he was so angry about not being able to go to the Derby with his, with his people. Like he, that was never shown. So this deal, you know what I'm saying? Like when, when, when Tommy's talking to Sabini and he, and he's like, Oh, he was really angry about that. That's the reason why we struck a new deal. And I'm like, but when did this happen? You know what I'm saying? All that stuff. It does seem like it happened off screen. If it didn't, you guys can tell me where to look, of course. Um, but I don't think it did because I've been paying attention. I don't think I missed that. But if I did, you guys can put it in the comment section, of course, because I'm not saying I never miss anything. I'm just saying, I just didn't see that. So it just, it caught me off guard. And if, if it didn't happen at all, that was just bad. So let's move on to the greater things about this episode. The conversation, when Grace, the interruption, that was brilliant. Brilliant writing. Brilliant writing, man. When, when Grace came in and told Tommy she's pregnant, blah, blah, blah. It interrupted the flow of the episode so much where you had, you just had to give them props because it was, it, it was perfect, imperfect timing. You get what I'm saying? Um, so it was, it was just, it was just great. That moment, the way how it was, how emotional it was, how you don't know what to think because you want Tommy to go kill this guy, but at the same time, you want her, you want him to hear what Grace has to say, and you want him to make a decision there, which is not a great thing to do um, because, for sure, for sure, he doesn't really know if it's his baby either so you and you don't know if it's his baby either so you you can't say okay tommy you need to you, you know what i mean so you're kind of like stuck between this this rock and a hard place where you're like you don't know what to think and you don't know what to tell tommy to do at this moment as the audience because you're like it could be her husband's baby you know what i'm saying it could be and she because she loves tommy she's coming to tell oh it's yours blah 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 you know what i'm saying but I also like the conversation that Grace and May had. I like that conversation. Why? Because it shows both of their emotions and how they feel about Tommy. Um, you get what I'm saying? Like she's trying, um, May is trying to prove to Grace that, hey, I got Tommy's back no matter whatever. You know what I'm saying? And I, um, and Grace is basically trying to say, this is, there's business and there's love. Okay. So at some point the two can coexist. You get what I'm saying? And that, that's what May is saying is like, the two can coexist is like, there's business and they love. And she's like, is there, you know what I'm saying? Cause she's basically saying there's no, there's no, um, there's no difference, but Grace is saying there is a difference, which I do believe there is a difference because, I experienced this in my per, in my personal life too, where as in you have to you have to kind of the two can go together, but at the the two can go together, but at the same time, in most things you gotta choose your relationship over business, else you 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 you're not gonna be in a relationship. If both of you are doing the same business, great, but still, 
it's kind of a separate thing because business can be business, especially if you're not partners in that business. So it's crazy. It gets crazy. You know what I mean? So I love that conversation. The, 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 the contrast that they were trying to do in that conversation was great. Um, I would have seriously thought that Arthur would have kicked it being in jail. I don't know how long he was in jail. It doesn't seem like it was that long because I thought he would have at least started going through withdrawal and stuff like that from cocaine. That's something that they could have portrayed to and got him off. Because the whole time I was thinking, how is this guy not going through withdrawal? You get what I'm saying? But he just went right back to it. They never showed any symptoms of him going through withdrawal from being snorting cocaine for that long and stuff like that for like the whole season. You know what I'm saying? So it was just crazy. Like they didn't portray that at all. That's something that they could have tapped into, but they, but the writers didn't. Um, so we got, what has happened? The shooting, the thing that happened with, um, with Lizzie, like the situation from the moment I started having that conversation, I knew this thing was going to go wrong. I knew she was going to get raped or whatever this, they, you know what I'm saying? They were gonna, she was gonna get raped before Tommy got there. Something was going to happen and he was not gonna get there on time. So I knew it was gonna happen. Um, I didn't want it to happen because she's trying to be, be better. And you know, I was saying that, you know, he's just asking you to get him there. You know what I'm saying? And that's just me thinking about the show in the moment. You know what I'm saying? He's just saying, get him there. You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, I'm saying, oh, shit, he's not going to get there on time. No way he's going to get there on time. Good writing. Writing is going to portray that. And I know he's not going to get there on time. And you know what I'm saying? Was it wrong for Tommy to ask her to do this? In some ways, yes. But in some ways, no. It is not wrong for him to do this because she works for, she works for him. And, she's, and he's just asking her. And if it wasn't for the blockage that they blocked off the room, he would have got there in time. He would have got there. Probably she would have gotten hit in the face or something like that. But the sexual act would have not been, you know, he wouldn't have gotten, you know, to sexual intercourse, which is, you know what I'm saying? Bad in itself. Everything that happened to her was bad. Her getting hit. He didn't expect, I didn't expect it to go that far. I didn't expect him to be violent with her because I mean, you know what I mean? It's just, it's a weird situation because I did not want anything to happen to her. Um, but in a way, because of the flow of the show, you wanted it, you want the plan to go perfectly. Because if it was me, would I have asked her to do it? Hell no. You can't ask a woman that's been trying to kick, you know, in real life, I wouldn't ask somebody to do that. You know what I'm saying? Somebody who used to be a prostitute, I'm going to tell him, oh, I need you to go to seduce that guy. Um, don't worry, I'll get there and I'll get there in time before he does anything to you. You get what I'm saying? Like you can't put people in that situation like in real life. But as I said, it's a show we're watching. We still got to consider the fact that it's fiction. So, but that's what I'm saying. Like in real life, I wouldn't ask somebody to do that. But in the show, I think that it was warranted. Her skills were needed. You get what I'm saying? Because, um, but then again, there's also the other idea where we could have just brought any whore. You get what I'm saying? There's also that. So I don't know. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He could have just brought any whore with him. Nobody would have batted an eye. You know what I'm saying? So to bring Lizzie, he had options. He didn't have to bring Lizzie. So let's go with that. Okay. So, um, so yeah, so the, the situation, um, the last scene, the final scene, of course, so he got, he killed the guy, um, and then we got Polly the Gangster came out, um, killed, um, I didn't expect that's what Polly was going there to do, but that's what it, he tried to sweet way, sweet talk his way out of it, and it, it, it didn't happen, Polly killed him anyway, so Major Campbell is done, he's done, he's done, finally, his story is done. He was irrelevant at this point. And um, so, yes, going forward, um, they came and picked him up after Tommy had a conversation with, with Sabini. Sabina tried to pull a gun and was like, look, look, bro, you better look around and see where you have. Pull a gun in here. That's 20 years for you, boy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So he, he put a gun back in and sit his ass down. And then 
we got him coming out. So the, the, the cops that actually arrested Tommy after Sabina broke the bottle, tried to kill him, whatever, um, they arrested Tommy. And I was like, why are they arresting him? That doesn't make any sense. Do they have new information? It turns out it's the guys that Major Campbell met with earlier in the episode. Um, they picked up Tommy. They went out to the boonies, whatever. Um, had the grave dug already. I really thought, and he was like, I mean, and his acting, Tommy's acting in that in that scene was absolutely great. You guys need to tell me if they ever, if, if, if this show has won any Emmys. Because they should. They deserve Emmys. Like, they deserve Emmys. Have they gotten nominations? At least nominations. You know what I'm saying? If they haven't won any, um, but at least nominations. You guys need to tell me if they if they won any or if they got any nominations for Emmys in the past or, or recently. Um, that, because the, the acting in this, in this show is really good. Um, but his, that one was just off the chain. Even after the guy saved him was like Mr. Churchill, whatever, whatever went on. And when he was leaving and he fell on his face and you could see that that scene was probably not planned because when he got up, he got drool, <laughs> drool coming off of his face. I mean, it, the acting, it was so real. It felt like he was actually living that moment in real life. That's how it felt to me. So that was great. And then he came home, saw Michael. Michael didn't leave. Um, so that was great, too, that he didn't leave. I didn't want him to leave. Um, so the bet was the bet between Polly and Tommy was that he's either going to stay or he's going to go. But it looks like Polly is the one that bet that he's going to stay because a mother knows her son. You get what I'm saying? Um, so he decided to stay, but he wants to make some real money like Tommy. So, um, looking forward to greater things for Michael. Of course, I still haven't forgiven for how he talked to his mom, but it looked like she's forgiven, forgiven him. So I'm going to forgive him because at the end of the day, that's still her son. And if she understands, I can't stand away and say, I don't get it. I have to understand too. So I'm glad that they've parted with that and kind of like, move them into a new space. So I expect greater things from them in, in season three, which I'm going to start next week. Of course, thank you guys for listening as always, man. And Andy said, Oh, I think I'm going to get married and I'm looking forward to that. We don't know who he's going to get married to, but I'm hoping it, it has to be grace because grace has, his, has his child. You know what I'm saying? Like may, I can't root for their, for their relationship. I just can't. I did. Their, their chemistry is not, as good as as Tommy and Grace, they just it's just not, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I, I'm yeah, you know I mean like it's just not. So I can't I can't root root for their relationship. I just can't. So thank you guys for listening as always, man. You guys see how excited I am, man, about this this season finale. It was awesome. Um, Polly definitely the MVP of this episode. Definitely, definitely, hands down. Nobody came close to her, this, um, not her acting, but what her arc is. Like, her arc this season was the best arc. In my opinion, her arc was the best arc this season. Um, Tommy's arc was great, too. Um, building something, then losing something, and now gaining everything. It was great, 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 great. Grace coming back awesome um she didn't really have an arc it was more of like she showed up for i think think she's been in three episodes this season so um i would say was it three episodes or four i think it's three episodes she was in um this season um she came back i, I wanted her to come back so i you guys know already i love her character um the introduction of alfie solomon's great tom hardy one of my favorite actors out there right now um, so I'm definitely down to see whatever he's doing. Um, so everything was great, man. This season was an awesome season. Can't wait for season three. Thank you guys for listening. To all. If you have not subscribed to the channel, subscribe to Terabyte React, man. We out here. Notifications on point, you know, hit that notification bell. And also, here we go. We about to start season three next week. Um, leave a like on this video. If you like my review, if you like watching this with me leave a like man and leave a comment in the comment section i'm challenging you guys to leave comments in these reactions when you watch them man leave a comment say something i know you guys are enjoying it 
I know you guys are enjoying watching um this series with me. So thank you guys for watching as always. It's your boy Terabyte Reacts. Peace.